Good morning. It is Pastor Joe. Glad that you're taking just a few minutes with me. Won't take a whole lot of time today. Uh, first of all, I want to let you know that we're praying as a church uh, body for some fellow, from, for folks in our fellowship who've lost some people that they love this week. Uh, Jennifer Allen, uh, mom has gone on to be with Jesus just so many weeks ago. Her dad passed and went on to be with the Lord. Uh, Terry Colburn at the Magnolia campus, uh, has lost a, a second cousin who was very, very close to him, an older cousin, more like a dad to him. So we continue to pray for those families as well. But you know, I just want to say to you and to all of you who've lost someone, and we've all been affected by this in our life, is that when we lose people who go on to be with the Lord, uh, the Bible says, uh, Paul wrote the church, we don't grieve like the rest of the world grieves. Why? Because we have this hope, and the hope is in Jesus Christ. And they're going into the very presence of God. It can't even begin to imagine, you know, uh, that that moment when you walk into the to the gates of heaven and the glory of heaven, and praise is abounding, and grace is flowing, and power and the glory of God is being manifest everywhere. No need of the sun because the brightness of the glory of God is there. Uh, it's just a heaven's an incredible place. I encourage you to read on it. We're talking about something in, the, in this this next service on Sunday uh, about a little bit about what's happening in heaven, which is worship. All right, that there's this this powerful presence of God's people gathered together, corporately worshiping God. And of course, I, I don't believe that's all that takes place in heaven. I believe there's going to be a myriad of responsibilities and blessings that are poured out on us, the children of God, through the ages to come as we experience eternal life. But worship is so important. The series we've been talking about is Knowing God. And worship is such an important aspect of that. We've talked about a lot of different things and knowing God from our introduction to understanding the relationship, to what it really means to worship God in spirit and how that operates and how we need to be familiar with how the spirit works in our life. And uh, this particular Sunday, last Sunday, we talked about the importance of love and that, that call to love God. This Sunday, we're talking about worship, not only corporate worship, but personal worship and just how vital it is in the life of the Christian. In heaven, those folks who are there are worshiping God. Let me read you an incident and a scene that takes place in heaven. And I believe this is not, this scene will happen probably soon because we're getting ready to see that I believe the, 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 the rapture of the church and the return of Jesus for his family as we get into heaven. And then the tribulation while we in heaven, I believe the tribulation begins very soon after that, or an occurrence with that, and God takes the saints out and the tribulation begins. But as you read in, in, in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 8, it says, uh, this is an event that takes place during this moment prior to the, the tribulation, along with the tribulation. It said, I, I, uh, uh, when he had taken the book, this is the Apostle John, God's, he'd been brought up into heaven for these prophetic views. He said, he'd taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. So there's a singing that takes place in heaven. They're singing, Worthy of you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased with God for your blood, men from every tribe, tongue, and people and nation. You made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. So they're just singing this song of worship. I wish that we had the melody here, but we don't. But it'll be melodious, I'm sure. In verse 11, Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and living creatures, and elders, and the number of them was myriads and myriads, and thousands of thousands. So we're talking literally millions of angels who can you imagine the chorus the roar of a chorus of echo of angels and they're saying here with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing and every created thing which is on heaven and on the earth under the earth and on the sea and all things in the heard saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory dominion forever and ever and the four living creatures kept saying amen and the elders fell down and they worshiped him this is a that that's a worship service man that i'm looking forward to attending and being a part of and that we all should be looking forward to but uh, it should start not just corporate in heaven it should begin here on the earth you know so i'll be talking about what worship is what it isn't a method for worship. We'll talk about personal worship. We'll talk about corporate worship. But I don't know I, that most people really understand the context and how it will impact your life. Even today, if you'll take some time to realize that what you're doing for God in your life, that is an act of worship. But also the Bible says, let us, let us worship. Let's sing to the Lord. Let's bless the Lord. So our worship, our praise, our adoration, our blessing, those, those are all acts of worship. So I'd encourage you to realize that Every action, every word, every deed today should represent worship to God, but also 
your words. I, I've discovered that when I get depressed or down or defeated in some regard, the best way to break off of those chains is to begin to praise and to worship God. So it could well be that you need to take a break at work today, get out to your car, wherever you can get a quiet place, the Lord, in the closet, in the bathroom, wherever, and just have a praise service and break the, break the heaviness that sits in on your life and break that spirit of bondage that gets around a lot. And the best way to do that is just begin to recite the word of God, bless the Lord, honor the Lord, but verbally bless his name and praise and worship him. You'll be astounded to what God will do. So that's this coming Sunday. The following Sunday is Mother's Day. I cannot encourage you enough to get family and friends there. We're going to have a great sermon, and I, not because I'm preaching, because it's coming from the Word of God on the marks of the characteristics of great women. So uh, that's right from the Word of God. You don't want to miss it, but it's also a time to get your family together. I encourage all our moms to put a little pressure on their families to get them in church. We're going to be having photo booths. We'll be doing family portraits. There's no charge. We post them online. Uh, we'll start Sunday early. There'll be a window of time. If you want to sign up, you can do that this coming Sunday in church. Say, so we have about 30 to 45 minute window there that you can get get in line, get signed up Sunday morning so you'll know when that is for the following Sunday when we do the portraits. And there'll be people instructing. Then we'll have a, a window immediately following Mother's Day service just for our guests. We'll get their family pictures taken. And then those who haven't got their pictures taken just yet can line up after that group. And uh, last time we did this, uh, they were really well done and came out great. And, uh, so it's it's time. Get your family together. Uh, get those family units. It'll be basically my family and then my family's families uh, uh, together getting their portraits done. So we'll make room for each unit within that to get done as well. So it's going to be a fun day. It's going to be a blessed day. So get on out to the house of God. Get back this Sunday. About most of you have started coming back to church. I can't say that a lot of churches are experiencing that blessing that we're experiencing we're still being as safe as possible. Social distancing is still taking place with our seating. We still have the hand sanitizers, encouraging people to use them as they come and go. Uh, but hey, there's nothing beats you and me and all of us as God's people getting together to worship him. So let's come for corporate worship. But hey, today, take some time, spend some time with the Lord, blessing the Lord. Love you. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday. Thank you.